This is hopefully going to be a quick video to address a recent discovery by tech YouTube channel Harbour Canucks, who just put out a video titled, The Intel Arc B580 is broken on older systems. And this prompted a lot of you to ask me if I could confirm their findings, and I'll be doing that in a roundabout way in this video. I won't be replicating their configuration exactly, as I trust their testing and believe their data is very accurate. So rather, what I'm going to be doing is testing a hardware configuration that I personally find a bit more interesting, and I suspect will be relevant to more of you. Before we get to that though, a quick explanation of what Harbour Canucks found, and I'll only give you the short version because really you should go check out their video. It has a lot more testing than what I've done in this video. This is a quick follow-up video, bit of a sanity check to see if what they found was accurate and does it apply to other CPUs. So it's a it's complimentary content, let's say, and I'm giving them full credit for discovering this issue, at least as it pertains to the B580. And what they found was, in more CPU demanding games, the Arc B580 dropped a considerable amount of performance when paired with a low end CPU, much more so than what you would see with an RTX 4060 or RX 7600. And this is likely due to driver overhead or just the way the Arc architecture works. Now, the low end CPU in question was the Core i5-9600K, and it's not really a CPU that we recommended you purchase at the time. Rather, we preferred the Ryzen 5 2600 as it offered more value, and it was overall a more powerful CPU. So rather than repeat what has already been done, I thought, why not attempt to verify the data with a hardware configuration that I believe many of you still use or you have used. So that's what I'll be doing. As a side note, I exposed the NVIDIA GeForce overhead problem a few years ago now. And while a very real issue, it was really only an issue for entry-level gamers. And most of them still buy GeForce GPUs anyway, and there are valid reasons for why this is. That said, at the entry-level end of the market, Radeon probably sells better than the other market segments, though there is limited evidence that Radeon GPUs are currently selling well at any price point. But probably the biggest factor for why gamers aren't too concerned with CPU overhead is because CPUs are significantly more affordable than GPUs. For example, the GeForce RTX 4060 costs $300 US, and it's not a particularly good GPU, but it's also the most affordable GeForce 40 series GPU there is. And to put that into context, for $300 you can buy a Ryzen 7 7700X or a Ryzen 7 5700X 3D with a motherboard and memory. So getting a very powerful CPU for similar money to that of an entry level graphics card is pretty easy. But in the case of the B580, it is a very cheap GPU, the most affordable current generation GPU there is, and it's by far the cheapest new product you can buy with more than 8GB of VRAM. So naturally, those of you making do with older systems will be interested in the B580, which is why this information is so valuable. It is worth noting this overhead issue won't always rear its ugly head. Hardware Canucks demonstrate that the B580 behaved as expected in a good number of games, and from past testing with GeForce GPUs, it's very likely this issue won't crop up for the majority of games, but when it does, it's bad. Now, Hardware Canucks identified a number of titles where this problem was particularly bad, so for this video, it's really simple. I'm going to compare my B580 and RTX 4060 data using the 9800X 3D to the Ryzen 5 2600 to see how each GPU scales in a select number of titles that expose this issue. I've rushed this content out with a very limited number of tests as I feel it's extremely important information that potential B580 buyers need to be made aware of. Oh, and please note resize will bar has been enabled for all of the testing. So let's get into the data. Starting with Space Marine 2, we see that the B580 does indeed perform much worse when paired with the slower Ryzen 5 2600. Our 9800X 3D data shows it to be 16% slower than the GeForce GPU, but with the Ryzen 5 2600, it's now a massive 40% slower and the 1% lows dip to 25 FPS, making the game barely playable now. So that's very bad as the B580's performance is quite literally halved. The performance hit for us in Rainbow Six Siege wasn't too bad, and in fact, this is more what you'd traditionally expect to see as the CPU becomes the performance limiting component, so the data here is acceptable. However, like Space Marine 2, Hogwarts Legacy is a disaster for the B580. Using the 9800X 3D, it's able to match or even slightly edge out the RTX 4060, but when running with the Ryzen 5 2600, the B580 is now 35% slower than the 4060. 
And it's the same story in Starfield, though this was already quite a poor title for the B580. But whereas it was 20% slower than the 4060 using the 9800X 3D, it's 45% slower when using the 2600. And the Spider-Man remaster results are a complete disaster. Using the 9800X 3D, the B580 looks really amazing, rendering 152 FPS on average, making it an impressive 20% faster than the RTX 4060. But with the Ryzen 5 2600 installed, yeah, it's another disaster. And frankly, unplayable, which is almost unbelievable given the original data. The average frame rate is now 41% lower than that of the RTX 4060, with 1% lows hitting 18 FPS, resulting in a very stuttery and unplayable mess. This is really disappointing and extremely worrying for the B580. It has been known for a while now that Intel's Arc GPUs do have a bit of an overhead problem, certainly more so than Radeon and even GeForce GPUs. But with the first generation, the issue was never that bad, and I think this is for a few reasons. Firstly, the first generation Arc GPUs, they were much slower, so lower frame rates were generally to be expected. But I think compounding the issue is the fact that games have become much more CPU demanding over the past few years. So we have a situation where older CPUs are struggling more than they ever have before, and Arc GPUs have become faster than ever before, at least with the right CPU. Combine those two factors with Arc's overhead problem, and it spells disaster for those using an older, low-end CPU. I guess the question now is, at what point does this become a non-issue, and scaling between the B580 and RTX 4060 returns to the level seen with the 9800X 3D? Without further testing, it's hard to say for sure, but obviously any modern processor will be fine, so don't expect to see an issue with a Ryzen 5 7600 for example, but that is a very new, reasonably pricey CPU, though it is cheaper than the B580. This issue, even with an older, low-end CPU, it won't affect all games. Harbour Canucks found no real issue for titles such as Alan Wake 2, Doom Eternal, Black Myth Wukong, Horizon Forbidden West, and Call of Duty Black Ops 6, for example, and then there was some performance degradation seen in Warhammer 3 Total War and Counter-Strike 2. Still, if you're using a CPU like the Core i5 9600K or Ryzen 5 2600, the Arc B580 needs to be avoided, and instead opt for the slightly more expensive Radeon RX 7600 or maybe the RTX 4060. This is extremely disappointing news for budget builders who will hype for the B580, and it's going to kill a huge amount of enthusiasm around this product. Worse still, this issue is unfortunately one that I don't think Intel can address via a software update. It's likely an architectural issue, though I can't say for sure, so it might be possible to address it to some degree, but right now we just have to take it for what it is. A very bad option for those of you using an older, slower CPU. This issue does explain some of the oddities we've already discovered with the B580 when testing with the 9800X 3D oddities that Intel was unable to explain, though it now makes sense why they avoided doing so. I found a number of instances where the performance at 1440p went almost unchanged from what we saw at 1080p, and it's quite clear now why that was, and why the B580 actually looks quite good at 1440p relative to what we see at the lower resolutions. And it also explains why the B580 hasn't proven to be all that good for esports titles that generally demand higher FPS. This overhead issue prevents it from hitting the same targets as the Radeon and GeForce competition, even with an extremely powerful CPU such as the 9800X 3D. Again, this is all very disappointing news, and it will likely be a death blow for the upcoming Arc B570, which will be targeting an even lower price point and therefore would have been even more appealing to budget gamers. I really hope this issue can be addressed in some way or another by Intel, but I'm really not hopeful that that will be the case. And it's a real shame. It's a disaster even for budget gamers hoping Intel was here to save the day. And on that terrible note, uh, I'm gonna end this video. So there's a lot more testing to do here wider range of CPUs, wider range of games. I do have a big 50 game benchmark coming up comparing the B580 and RTX 4060, though that is with a higher end CPU, so not really relevant to what we're talking about here. But yeah, there'll be some CPU, GPU scaling content coming up in the not too distant future. But that's really gonna do it for this one. So if you appreciate this quick little update, uh, then 
I suppose give it a like, subscribe, because I said we will have more content on this subject coming up. And there's also the join button and Patreon if you're interested in those to get a bit more horror and box goodness. But other than that, um, that's really going to do it for this one. I'm your host, Steve. I'll see you again next time.